Hello, I'm Dr. John Gyllenhaal, and I help the users of the Supercomputer Center here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory when they have difficult to debug problems. A few months ago, the lead developer of one of our mission-critical codes contacted me because his code was intermittently hanging when run on more than 65,000 processor cores. When he tried to reduce the scale of his problem, he couldn't reproduce, and he knew he couldn't simply attach a full-featured debugger to all of those processes to figure out what was going on. I told him that we had the perfect tool for the job, STAT, the Stack Trace Analysis Tool, which is the subject of this video. As we fired up STAT and attached it to his hung job, I told him that STAT used highly scalable algorithms to gather and combine detailed information about where every process is, and then presents this information in an easy to understand format and identifies any outliers. In this particular case, all of his processes were in the exact same MPI collective call. MPI is a system level library that allows processes to communicate with each other. And although you can get yourself messed up with MPI, in this case, as long as his arguments were valid, it was unlikely that it was his application's fault. We then took several different snapshots over the next few minutes to verify that we're truly in this collective call. And then using the information that every process was in the same spot, we attached a full feature debugger to just a few of the processes and verified that indeed the arguments were correct. Using this information, we were able to quickly come up with a workaround, namely to use a less efficient but non-hanging algorithm to do this collective operation while the vendor worked on fixing the actual problem. Using STAT, debugging problems such as hangs, code slowdowns, and other weird behavior on 100,000 processing cores is just as easy as debugging the same problem on 100 cores. In a few years, when my colleagues and I are debugging problems that only occur in a million cores, it should be just as easy because STATS technology eliminates all those vexing problems that occur because of scale. Greg Lee, the main code developer for STAT, will now present its features. Hi, I'm Greg Lee. I'm the lead developer of STAT. The main goal of STAT is to help users find bugs in their parallel application. Today I'm going to demonstrate some of STAT's features to show you how it accomplishes this goal. To start, I'm going to launch our test application. This application is designed to run 10 iterations of computation and communication. And I'm running on 1,024 MPI tasks. You'll notice after each iteration, a status message is printed. And after the fourth iteration, it appears to come to a halt. To figure out why this is the case, I'm going to go ahead and launch our stat GUI and attach to our application. What STAT's going to do is it's going to launch its daemons and gather a stack trace from each of the process and merge them into this prefix tree that you see here. Oftentimes, as the user, the first thing I want to do is focus on the user level code. And to do this, we have this button here that'll cut away the MPI communication layer. And so we see that of the 1,024 processes, there are three distinct behavior equivalence classes. So from here, what we might want to do is identify those equivalence classes. And this allows us to choose a subset of tasks to feed to a full feature debugger, such as TotalView or DDT. And in this case, we'd effectively reduce the search space from 1,024 processes to three representatives. For now, I'm going to cancel so I can show you some additional features of STAT. Let's revert back to the full graph. And one thing that STAT allows you to do is look for known patterns of bugs. So we've noticed that oftentimes the culprit that's causing the hang can be the stack trace that has the shortest path. So to help narrow this down, we have this button here. And we also have a similar button for the longest path. Other behaviors that we've seen is that the stack trace that is visited by the least number of tasks can identify outliers that are behaving some sort of odd computation that could be causing the problem. So that's what this button here provides. One thing you'll notice is that these stack traces are gathered at the function name level, which is fairly coarse grain. So if you want more fine grain information, STAT allows you to gather stack traces with source file and line number information. And so again, if we cut away the MPI communication layer, we can now see not only the function name, but actually the source file and line number that is currently being executed. What this also allows us to do is some more advanced analysis, such as our temporal ordering analysis. 
And what this tries to do is it analyzes each of the processes and determines how much progress, progress it has made through the application. And so what we're seeing here is that STAT is saying that in order to perform this analysis, it needs to gather more information from the processes, in this case, the loop ordering variable. So let's go ahead and open that in a new tab so we can compare to the previous graph. So we can see here that all the processes are on line 34 of our test code. And with this, with this additional information, we see that two of the processes are stuck in the fifth iteration, while the rest of the processes have moved ahead to the sixth iteration. So with this additional data, we can actually derive some further temporal ordering. And if we traverse the entire tree, we now see the entire execution progress of our application. The strings after the function name indicate the progress, and the color of the edges also help delineate that, with the red indicating the least progress and the blue indicating the most progress. What we've noticed is that oftentimes the tasks that have made the least progress are stuck in some, some sort of computation, while the rest of the tasks have moved ahead and are actually waiting for those tasks. So let's go ahead and look at the source code for those tasks that have made the least progress. You'll see that the colored arrows indicate which line of code the tasks are on and that the colors correspond back to the prefix tree here. In this case, the tasks that we have identified made the least progress are in this create checkpoint code. And that in and of itself isn't necessarily a problem, but if it's actually stuck in that checkpoint code, then we may have a problem. So to help figure this out, we have the ability to gather multiple stack traces. And so right now what we'll do is we will gather five stack traces over time. And in between each stack trace, we're going to let the application run for a second. And this will tell us whether the application is actually progressing through the code or if maybe it's stuck in a certain portion of the code. So we previously identified task zero as making the least progress. So we can go ahead and focus on that task. And we see that over those five samples, it never made it past line 70 of that code. So this may indicate that task zero is an indeed the culprit and that we want to look at that in more detail. So let's go back to our equivalence class window. What we now want to do is unselect all the representatives and specifically focus on task zero and attach our full feature debugger to task zero. Now full feature debuggers provide a rich set of features to look at individual processes, but they don't provide as rich a feature as stat to help identify which of the thousand processes or more that you want to specifically focus on. So we'll notice that this debugger agrees that task zero is stuck in line 70. And from what, here, what we might want to do is our normal debugging operation, such as diving in on variables, we see we're ranked zero. We could step through the code, look at registers, and do all the normal debugging features that we do with a full feature debugger. So what STAT has effectively done is narrowed down the search space from, in this case, 1,024 processes. And now we're only focusing on one in detail. Another useful feature of STAT is its ability to save its output to a file. This has proven useful for users to send stats to bug information to the developer of the code to help find a bug. What we're looking at here is a real-world hang case of a climate modeling code that was run on about 500 processes. You'll notice that the breadth of this tree is particularly wide, and that's because this application consists of five unique components. Despite this complexity, stat was able to quickly identify the bug. What immediately stood out was this call trace to the right, which was extremely long. When we focused on that portion of the call prefix tree, what we noticed was a pthread mutex lock was acquired here. And later, the same process tried to acquire the same lock down here, which is a classic deadlock case. STAT has also been able to run at extremely large scales. What we're looking at here is the output of STAT run on 212,992 processes of the Blue Gene L installation at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. What you'll see is that stats analysis scales nicely, and we have an easily manageable prefix tree. Similarly, we've been able to run on the Jaguar machine at the Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Here we're looking at a prefix tree gathered from 216,000 processes, 
And again, you'll notice that stats output scales nicely. To summarize, we have found that STAT is extremely effective at debugging the most complex parallel applications on the world's largest supercomputers. STAT is able to accomplish this feat by narrowing down the problem search space to a small subset of processes and a small portion of code. Because of its lightweight design and highly scalable architecture, it is able to perform this analysis with sub-second latencies. To date, STAT has already helped find several bugs and has saved users countless hours.